What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com back with some exciting news about Blender. So version 2.90 has released and with it, as always with Blender, has come a number of different improvements to the program. I wanted to make a quick video talking about some of my favorites, but also just telling you where you can get more information about this new release. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so first of all, you can get information on this by visiting the page in the link in the notes down below. So I will link to this page, but there's a Blender 2.90 zero releases page where you can get information on everything that's been released in this new version. So first off, we've got this amazing new splash screen and uh, this came from Daniel Bystead. You can actually you can actually download this from the Blender website and check it out. So if you want to check this model out, maybe learn a little bit from both the model and also the lighting, um, that will be in the Blender 2.90 page for download. And so one of the first new features is the new Nishida Sky. Um, this is a physically based sky texture that you can use in order to simulate a sky. And you can download this example file from that Blender 2.90 page as well. But you can see how you can adjust things like the way that the air looks or um, how much dust is in the air, the ozone, other things like that, which really give you a lot of control over the way that your renderings are going to look. So you can use this new sky function to really generate some realistic looking skies inside of cycles on your computer. Computer. So again, download this file and check it out. There's information about how to use this over here on the left-hand side as well if, when you open this page. So Motion Blur in Eevee has been completely rewritten. So there's now support for additional things like mesh deformation, hair and subframe, accumulation for better precision. But basically this is going to give you more Motion Blur options for your renderings. So Intel Embry is now being used when you ray trace. What that means is that means that your processor is going to do better specifically having to do with scenes with motion blur rendered in cycles. So you can see how if you look down below, there's significant improvements specifically in the Agent 327, which has a lot of motion blur contained inside of it. But overall, this just means that your renderings are going to be faster when using motion blur. So in addition, you can also use the Open Image Denoiser inside of your 3D viewport as well as for final renders. All right, so now when you're rendering with cycles, um, they've also added the ability, um, sometimes on lower polygon meshes like this one, you start getting artifacts. Like right along here, you can see even with shade smooth, act smooth activated, you can see the individual geometry. If you select the object, go over into Object Properties and go down to Shading, and you adjust the Shadow Terminator function, you can see how that moves your shadow up and inward so that you can't see those artifacts anymore. So note that this is not physically accurate. This is something that's kind of playing around with the visibility settings, but it can help you avoid those artifacts inside of your renderings. So now optics is available for all NVIDIA GPUs that actually support it. Um, so that's gonna be anything um, Maxwell level or higher. So um, depending on what your GPU is, you can now use that optics as well in your scenes. So they've made several changes to the multi-resolution subdivision inside of the sculpting functions. So you can use this in order to rebuild lower subdivisions, which is great for importing models from other sculpting softwares, other things like that. So if you're into the sculpting functions, make sure you check this one out. So they've made multiple different changes to the cloth filter as well. So allowing you to use different kinds of simulations as well as face sets. Again, I don't really use the sculpting functions all that much. If you do though, you're gonna wanna check this stuff out because they've added a bunch of really useful features. So they've also got some additional stuff for the pose brush. So if you're using the pose brush, um, there's changes to that as well. Um, for me, this one is probably the bigger deal. Uh, might be the, depending on how you look at it, this one could be the biggest deal. They've added a new extrusion tool called Extrude Manifold. So the Extrude Manifold tool is going to be very familiar to people that use programs like SketchUp. So previously with the extrusion tools that we had, you could extrude things like these faces down, but what you'd get is you'd get these leftover edges, other things like that. Well, the Extrude Manifold tool is going to allow you to extrude those down and it's going to automatically delete out those edges. So notice how you don't have all of those leftover edges in here before. This is very similar to the SketchUp push-pull tool. It can be really useful for things like creating holes in walls 
panels for doors, windows, other things like that. Notice how it leaves a face, but all I have to do is tap the X key and delete faces in order to get rid of that. So cutting holes for things like doors and windows um, will be a lot easier. Some people will note that this tool doesn't create perfect topology. I agree with this, but I think there's enough workarounds, especially for people that are coming from tools like SketchUp, that I think it's going to be more of a good thing than a bad thing. But it is something to be aware of, um, depending on what kind of modeling you're doing. So in addition, you can now snap using edge and vertex slide, which I think is gonna be a very welcome feature. Um, so being able to actually align vertices and edges when you're using the uh, edge slide is going to really help you with your precision when you're modeling inside a blender. So they've also adjusted the bevel tool so that you have custom bezier curves and made some changes to the way that normals are preserved when you use the rip, delete, and dissolve tools. So I don't want to get too in-depth on a lot of these. There's been improvements to the ocean spray. Um, there's automatic adjustment of UV and vertex colors when editing your mesh. But the one that I really like is they've added some new tools for selections when you're dealing with UVs. So now you've got options for pick shortest path, pick shortest path fill region, and UV rip. And so the way that works is let's say that we have a Suzanne. So we'll add a Suzanne. Move it over here. And let's say we're gonna do some UV mapping on Suzanne. Well, if you select Suzanne, come in here to do that, now they have the ability, first of all, if you do a control click, it'll pick the shortest path along vertices. So this is gonna make your selecting things with your UV editing a lot better, like significantly better. So you can also use a grid select. So for example, if we use our cube right here, if I was to click on this, if you were to just hold the control key, this would just pick your shortest path. However, if you were to do a control shift, and click, that's gonna do a grid select and it's gonna select everything in here from this face to this face. You can use that to easily select additional pieces um, inside of your model, um, inside a UV editing mode. So they've also added the ability to rip. So if I was to select these, for example, and tap the V key, notice how tapping the V key is gonna allow me to rip these vertices and move them away from the rest of the vertices. All right, so they've made some improvements to open VB, VDB fluids, the cloth pressure gradient. Then they've also continued to upgrade their user interface. So for example, they've updated the search operator so that you can see more about the things that you have selected. So for example, this is showing you how to get to the objects or get to the commands when you search them, which is great because I've searched for commands before and I have no idea if there's a keyboard shortcut for them. This is really good for showing us how to get to those really quickly. So so they've made some changes to the readability of columns so that you can like align them in line, which means they won't take up as much space on the right hand side of your screen. But then the big one that a lot of people have been asking for is the ability to drag and drop modifiers, right? So instead of sitting here and clicking on the up and down arrows, having things kind of jumping up and down, you can just click and drag these modifiers now inside of this list. So that's going to be something that's going to be really, it just makes everything a lot quicker, makes things a lot easier. So they've also added a statistics overlay in the 3D viewport. This is something that I've seen some questions about in the past, um, but you should be able to access this by, and so you can access your statistics overlay by clicking the drop down right here under overlays and clicking on statistics. That's gonna show you um, how many objects you have in your model, how many vertices, edges, faces. That'll really help you with management of everything. I think it's something that was in some older versions of Blender, kinda got hidden or taken away. And I think it's gonna be nice to have this back because I think a lot of people really relied on that. So another feature that I think is gonna get overlooked but is a big deal to me is they've added the ability to auto scroll the view and dragging the outliner elements. So I don't know if you've ever Ever tried inside a blender to drag something around but you would click and drag this and you could only drag it into about right here and then you'd just be kind of stuck right you're trying to scroll with your mouse and all of that well what they've done is they've added an auto scroll so now if I uh, scroll to the top or the bottom of my outliner this is going to scroll up and down with that giving me a lot more control over moving things around in the outliner which is great because that was really frustrating to me in the past so they've added some tools to help with compositing in Nuke. I've never used those tools, so I can't really speak to those. There's also more down here. They made improvements to a uh they made improvements to the collections manager add-on, a lot of other things. So I would recommend coming in here, reading through these and seeing if there's anything that's helpful to you or something that you're interested in. 
so that is kind of a fast scroll through of version 2.90. Obviously we could get a lot more in depth with a lot of this, but for right now, this should give you a good idea. Make sure you go download that new version and check it out. As always, be aware that some of your add-ons may not be updated to work with this new version yet. So just be aware of that. Make sure you keep a copy of your older version of Blender on your computer just in case. But leave a comment below. Let me know which features you like, what you're excited about in this new version. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.